Hello! In this video, we'll demonstrate the concept of dynamic memory allocation. Let's say we want to enter a bunch of numbers in the console, and then print them back along with their average. If we'll be entering a lot of numbers, we probably don't want to count how many there are ahead of time. Unfortunately, this can cause a problem since arrays in C have to be declared with a fixed size, as we know. One way people sometimes work around this is to allocate a larger size for the array than what they could ever imagine needing. But of course, that's wasteful and certainly not very elegant. And what if they actually do enter that many numbers? In addition, arrays that are created inside functions can't be returned by the function. That's because any variable that is local to a function is created in a portion of memory called the stack. The memory in the stack goes away when the function ends so that it can be reused by other functions when they're called. Fortunately, there's another way in C to declare memory that can be resized and that outlives any function. This is called dynamic memory allocation and uses the function called malloc. Let's learn about some of the relevant functions needed to do dynamic memory allocation. First, malloc reserves space for variables or arrays in a different location of memory called the heap. That memory persists as long as the program runs, regardless of which function it's called from and that lets our functions return arrays. We pass malloc the number of bytes of memory that we need, and it in turn allocates that memory bytes of memory on the heap, and it returns a pointer to that memory. You can visualize what's going on something like this. So here's the heap. We ask it for a number of bytes of memory, and then it returns a pointer to that memory. So how do we know how much space we'll need? Well, if we're malloc space for an array, it depends both on how many elements are in the array and on how big each element is. The size of a function returns the number of bytes in any type or variable passed to it. We'll use it in our calculations. Dynamic memory allocation also allows us to resize arrays that are created using malloc. We do this by calling realloc with a pointer to the malloc array and the new number of bytes that we want the array to have. Notice that it also returns a pointer to the array. That's because realloc is intelligent about how it resizes arrays. Let's consider the example where we want to grow our array by 50%. If there isn't enough space in the heap to grow the array in place, say because of another variable that's been malloc near it, then it finds and allocates some new space that actually is large enough, and it copies the existing data into that space. Now, I can't change the value of the, of the pointer that was passed to a function. Remember, I can only change what it points to. And realloc needs a way to communicate the new value of the pointer back from the function. So it returns a pointer to the new space. Now, if there's space on the heap to grow the array in place, so we'll consider a second example here. And I have my array and my pointer. If it can grow it right in place, there's n nothing else there, well, it just does so. I mean, that's, that's a lot more efficient since no data needs to be copied. And in that case, the pointer that it returns has the same value as the pointer that was passed to it. Finally, since memory allocated from the heap doesn't automatically go away when a function ends, we need a way to tell our program that we're done using it so that it can be reused. We do this by passing the pointer to the memory to be reused to the free function. So if I pass this pointer here to free, then it will go through and it will free up that memory for others to use. It's also good practice to set the value of the pointer that's been freed to null when you're done, so that it's clear that it's no longer pointing to valid memory. Let's look back at our example of entering a bunch of numbers and calculating their average. If you're enrolled in CSSE 120 or 221, you can check out the Calculate Average project from your Subversion repository. Otherwise, you can just download a zip file of the project. Let's go to Eclipse. Alrighty, here we are in Eclipse, the Calculate Average program. All right, and if we give it a run and see what it does, it's asking us for integers. Negative is a sentinel. So say we enter a few numbers, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and enter then negative 1 to exit. And it will go ahead and print the numbers and their average. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Okay. We're allocating an array of fixed size. I chose a fixed size of 5. And going through, 
and getting my prompts and so on. And as long as they enter in a positive number, I'm going to save that into the array, update the count, and ask for another one. And finally, when we're done, we loop through all the, the integers that were entered and calculate the, a running sum. And then the average, of course, is just the sum divided by that count. Right? So what we just saw is that when we use the, the proper number of integers, everything works just fine. One other thing you may have noticed is that I was printing out the addresses or pointers for all the variables here. And we can see that these are all roughly the same place in memory, sort of a hex 22FF or FE, right in that same location. Now, if I take my program and I run it again and I give it a whole bunch of numbers, so I'm not really caring right now what I'm entering in, but uh-oh, I just entered more than five numbers. Sometimes it'll actually be okay. So I entered in 10 numbers, and it took them just fine. But what happens if I keep going? So enter in a whole bunch of numbers here. I'm going along, cruising along, thinking that life is really good. And then, uh-oh, I just crashed my program. Right? So I must have written over something that was really important. Right? And that kind of makes sense, because you know, I only asked for, for space for five integers. Right? So it, it should make no guarantees about giving me more. OK, so let's fix this program. So what we want to do is replace nums with what we used in the, earlier, which was malloc. So we're going to declare nums to be a pointer. Remember, malloc returns pointers equals malloc. And we need to ask for the proper number of, of bytes. So I know that um, I need size integers. Well, how big is an integer? Well, it could vary from system to system. So this is where I'm going to use my size of function and pass it the type that I care about, which is int. Okay, so I'm mallocing the n correct number of integers times the size of each one. Technically, malloc returns uh, what's called a pointer to void or a generic pointer. So it's a good idea to, to cast what's returned from it to a pointer to integer. Anything that I malloc, I need to free. So I'm going to go way down to the bottom of my program here, and then I'm going to free nums so that it releases that memory again. Then this program, it, they'd be freed as soon as it finished running anyway. So it's not a big deal here, but a very good habit to get into in a larger program. And what I'll do is set nums equal to null when I'm done. Let's run my program again. And so first thing that we notice here is that nums is stored in a very different place. Okay, so now, instead of being at, at 22FF, it's in 3D0F, which is very different. And that is um, actually grabbing space from the heap. So I'm going to type some numbers here. Again, I, I don't care what they are. And chances are, if I type in, like before, if I type in something 5 or maybe a little bit bigger, it works just fine. And I can go ahead and try to use more. So let's see. Let's, let's try to grab around 20 is where it crashed before. Um, and if I end that program, it looks like it's OK. Um, but actually, once I, I stop running the program, it actually does crash here. So we still haven't actually asked it for more memory. Right? What we've done is just overwritten something else in the heap. So the final thing that I want to do here is to increase the size of my array when it's needed. Right? So it looks like in this line of code here, in line 24, I'm going to be assigning um, the number that I entered into the, the count position. And if count is equal to size, that's actually where it's first going to break here. So if count, uh, type that, count double equals size. Right. Remember, I'm starting with 0. So count equaling size is actually right past the, the end of the array. Here's where I want to resize it uh, to be bigger. It turns out to be good practice not to resize that often. And the reason is that, remember, we, we saw with realloc that it potentially needs to copy data to a new location in memory. So what I generally do is take the size and actually double it. So I want to ask for double the amount of space. And that will get less and less frequent the further I, I go through the program. Right. So I'm going to make a call to realloc. So realloc. And I'll pass it the new size that I want. So I pass in my old pointer. And my new size is just size times the size of an integer. 
And that's the same as before when I originally malloced, only this time with a, with a bigger size. And a couple things about this. Likewise, um, I want to cast the return value as a pointer to int. And remember that realloc returns a pointer, so I'm going to reassign that to nums. And let's go ahead and save and run this program. So I'm going to type in a whole bunch of numbers. Again, I'm not really caring what they are. A whole bunch of numbers, but let's try it up to about, about 20. And then I hit negative 1, and it works just fine here. So let's dig just a little bit further just to, just to see if we can um, get some more insight into what's going on. I'm going to go ahead and put a print statement here and see what happens with, with nums. And here what I care about is the value of the, of the pointer. Where is it storing nums? So we'll print that out and with nums itself. And then technically, when you're reallocating or even malloking, you should have a test to see if what realloc or malloc returns is null. And what that signifies is that there's not enough memory for your program to, to run. And you can imagine, unless you're, you're reallocating um, automatically, you're, you're never going to run into this problem if you're just typing in things with the console. You just can't type that fast. But it's good practice because sometimes it, it does happen. Right? So if realloc returns null, we're just going to go ahead and exit. Like I said, I don't anticipate that happening here. Run the program again. And we see that nums is, is stored at, at 490 FD8. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and type in some numbers here. And we see that when it gets past the 5, right, that it actually did do the realloc and it reassigned nums. And if we look at this value here, it's still the FD8. So it looked like it was just able to grow in place. So again, it, d it could do that very efficiently. And if I continue entering in numbers here, right, it's still in FD8 again. So no problem. It looks like it found a big chunk of memory for it to, um, for it to live in. And every time it's doubling at 5, at 10, at 20, um, and then later on at, at 40, my guess is that it's going to still be able to stay right in there. So let's, let's go up to 40 just to check here. All right. Um, yeah, so, so it, it, it took it just fine. And I'll go ahead and, and exit, and it gives me my average. Well, that's it. Until next time, I'm Matt. Catch you later.